Hello and welcome to the Grade Cricketer on 7. An inauspicious start straight away. There are two sleeps to go before the first test match at the Adelaide Oval. Who's even going to play for Australia? Is Virat Kohli the best thing that's ever happened to cricket since Bradman? That's debatable. Also, the massive showdown of the week. Michael Clarke versus Jared Waitley. And then, of course, the WBBL has kicked off. We're going to tell you what Australian cricket needs before answering your questions using the hashtag AskTGC, which you can send through right at this very moment in time. Ian Higgins here, Sam Perry over there is Dave Edwards. Boys, welcome to episode one of our very own TV show. So, um, hi. Mm. G'day, Ian. Uh, it's uh, great to be here, yeah. mate. Absolutely fantastic. We've got our table here, the scorer's table. We've got our team box, mm. um, valuables we'll tin. Yep. Yep. Um, something for the salvos, a bit yep. of charity work that we're doing. Of yep. Our own books on the table yeah. as well. Two best-selling books. It's a normal thing to have on the table. Yes. Yep. Mm. Yep. We're just pushing product. Okay, well, here we go. Pushing product. This is just an entire advertisement yeah. for us, yeah. the great cricketer. Um, two sleeps to go before mm. the first test match. Uh, the summer has lingered, it seems. There's cricket mm. everywhere except nowhere. But now it's here. Mm. It's coming. Mm. Hold on. I'm coming. Yes, that's right. Not a strange turn of phrase no, at all. Uh, no. It, it should be a real series of intrigue, he goes. Oh. I, I was minded to think about I don't know if you guys read... Uh, Justin Langer's seminal book, The Power of Passion, um, back in 2001. I certainly did on, on Christmas yeah. night. Um, yeah. But I was minded to like remember a quote from that book. Uh, I wish I could remember kind of like Dostoyevsky quotes and stuff like that, yeah. but I remember Justin Langer quotes. Justin but Langer's he, book. He quoted within that book, he, well, let's call it a sub-quote. I think it's a Paul Kelly line saying, you know, the darkest hour is before the dawn. Okay. That's when no. the great Avenger is born. Mm. Uh, Australia's the great Avenger. Australia's going to need to unearth somebody yep. here for them to succeed in this series. We need runs. Yes. We've got a lot of new players in the side. Mm. Uh, you know, who are they going to come from? Usman Khawaja, first and foremost, he's mm. the only player who has scored 100, um, it seems, in about three and a half years for Australia, mm. even though Smith and Warner only got banned about six months ago. Mm. Um, so maybe Khawaja, I don't know who else, I don't know who's, who, who's even going to play. Who else in the team? In Marcus the Harris, team. will he play? Mm. Probably. Mm. Um, he might get some runs, and mm. that would make us feel good as a nation because mm. we desperately need runs. Mm. Mm. Um, Mitch Marsh, there's two Marshes, mm. maybe one of them will hit some runs. Well, let's maybe get on a little bit later to who's actually going to play in that mm. first test match for Australia mm. and also maybe learn some names from the Indian players as well, someone who else who isn't Virat Kohli because he's basically playing 1-11 to 11 at the Pretty moment. Sure this show is geo-blocked though, so we don't yeah. really need to talk too much about India. I mean, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, Eyes Wide Shut, you would have known in the special features, uh, Stanley Kubrick's film, he deliberately made that film very slow mm. and I feel like that's how the summer has gone so far for yeah. Australia because it's like Kubrick in the grade, yes, yeah. it's very Kubrick. Mm. The, the yeah. Langer era feels Stanley Kubrick. Yes. I've been saying that for a long time now. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to it here, guys. I'm just looking forward to seeing a red kookaburra ball again. I yeah. feel like I've been seeing too right. many white balls, too many yeah. weird mm. short-form formats. Yeah. I just want to see a red kookaburra ball, yeah. green grass, mm. blue skies, summer's here. Mm. Mm. Cricket at the Adelaide Oval. Australia desperately need to win games of cricket. That was a, that was a quote that Mark War said. That Australia yeah. just something that needs to win yeah. games of cricket. Just desperately. Yeah. He says a lot well. of good things. He also says if you can't um, hit spinners uh, that well, just get to them on the full. Just um, get them on the full. He doesn't rate like spinners, even though he was one. <laughs> <laughs> Any strange, warning included, I believe. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So um, the first test is here. Um, um, how badly do Australia need just one to be playing cricket on free-to-air television? Mm. <laughs> um, and to just to actually play well, first we, and foremost. We, we, we need this desperately. We yeah. haven't had um, like a meaningful series win in uh, a meaningful format for like what seems to be like quite a long period of time. I mean, wh one of those things that's uh, going to help decide that is who is actually selected in the Australian side. Like it seems right. at the moment like it's really a toss up between like all, all the bowls are sorted. The top order, I believe, is sorted. It will be Harris, yeah. it will be Finch, it will be Kawaja, then Marsh. Mm. But then it's about whether they go with the hometown hero, the home boy, mm. Travis home boy. Head, or mm. Peter Hanscom, who's been scoring some runs. It seems like Mitch Marsh will get a giggle. Mm. There's some speculation a little bit later. Like, I'm a Hanscom guy, I have to say, and I'm sorry to like Adelaide yeah. South Australian viewers out there. I'm a Hanscom guy. Um, he's batting really well. The thing I like about Hanscom is that like he's been broken down. Like Test cricket's broken him, and he's rebuilt, so he's Hanscom 2.0. Right, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, like any, Tiger Woods 3.0. Is like any good Test cricketer worth their salt needs to be a 2.0 in some way. Steve right. War got broken down, then rebuilt. Shane Warne even with his you know, shoulder and his finger. Bradman. Bradman. It <laughs> was the War. 2.0 <laughs> yeah, after the War. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. And it's, that's exactly what I was going to say. But yeah, I like Hanscom 2.0. I think if yep. you put Head and Hanscom side by side and said, who's more likely right. to have a dominant series? I'm going to say Hanscom. Um, also, Travis Head right. looks like Fred Savage or Kevin from the Wonder Years. Cut me off there, Pear's <laughs> going to say the exact same thing. I like mm -hmm. the idea that once an Australian cricketer 
uh, leaves the spotlight of the national side. He then goes into the uh, you know um, obligatory world of state cricket where yes. nothing really happens. And yes. so I've been watching Travis Head play and struggle a little bit in the mm. subcontinent, mm. hard place to go on bat. Mm. But I've been wondering about what Pete Hampson's been doing. And the answer is always straight from The Simpsons, someone else, someone else, mm. I'm someone else. Yes. Not me, yes. Pete Hanscom. Mm. Mm. Um, and so, you know, Travis Head, uh, he's going he's gonna to play the home game, isn't he? Yeah. I, I like the idea of, of a Pete Hanscom over a Travis Head. Um, only because I haven't seen him play in a while. So mm, I'll yeah. just back the numbers you and like see if you just go for things that are good in theory. You yeah. know, theory. You like Pete Hanscom as a theory. And communism. And we'll talk about theories later mm. yes. um, in our second segment. I'd just like to get onto the other side of things, which yeah. is Coley. Yes. I mean, we really uh -huh. need to talk about him. Well, he's mm. been all we've been talking about privately mm. for the mm. last few weeks since he stepped mm. down on our shores. Mm -hmm. But can he be stopped? I just think like, Coley is so much in Australians' heads now, mm. isn't he? Like, he's so deep inside our heads. We can't stop talking about him. Can't it's almost stop. like a fait accompli. He's going to score thousands of runs yes. uh, in this series. Like, like Coley reminds me of... Mm. Uh, like we're, we're fascinated with him. He reminds me of like a maybe like a, a girl that you would flirt with in primary yeah. school. You know, you pick on the ones that you love so much. Yeah. He's yeah. so much. Bullying. He's yeah. so yeah. We bully we bully them and we pick on them because we like them. You know, Skeddy bats. Col is what we've well, them in we've, the we've, yeah, we've been calling them Skeddy bats, which obviously will have um, a you know completely positive effect yes. uh, on the series. It's helpful yes. in many ways. Yeah, he's not going to score any runs because he read a headline and said Skeddy bats, and he yeah. thought, well, that's the end of my mm. series. I might as well pack my yeah, kit up and go scared. home. Mm. I've never known a batsman to come out here, gents, um, and it's just expected that he's just going to score runs. I was hearing uh, our colleague at Channel 7, Dirk Nanez, talk yes, the other day, and he was just saying... Yeah. Saw him at the water cooler earlier. Yes, yeah, saw him at the water cooler. And mm. we, he said to me, he said, he goes, um, I, I just expect that... He didn't call No, he said, he said like, can you please yeah. move? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, he just said, you know, there's going to be times where he's going to be... You, you can't bowl to him, and he's just going to mm. score runs. I don't remember that ever happening when with, like, with Lara, Tendorka, uh, you mm. know, anyone else, any of the greats. But do you remember, mm. like, back in the day, back before culture reviews and stuff, yeah. you know, mm. Glenn McGrath, <laughs> another colleague of yes. ours, yeah. we saw at the water cooler earlier. Yep. Yeah. Um, Pigeon. He used to Pigeon. Yeah. specifically Pigeon. target opposition batsmen or mm. sometimes captains, and mm. the whole point there was to not ridicule them, but call them out in the media, and yes. then the ultimate... End goal was to make sure they a didn't score any runs, mm. b got dropped, or c just suffered a complete mental breakdown. Yes, um, mm. that was the ultimate goal. Why aren't we doing that anymore? Uh, I well, I don't I know. I think he's. Con I think Cole is confusing us massively because on the one hand, it's mm. exactly like us. He's aggressive. Mm. He goes at the opposition. He scores lots of runs. On the other right. hand, he plays in the tour match and does throwdowns in full whites. Yes. On the SCG. So, so straddles anyway, both. Ex exactly. Like like culturally in Australia, anyone, everybody knows you don't do anything when it comes to training or mm. pre-match in full whites. And there he is mm. on the hallowed turf of the SCG doing throwdowns. I mean, to me, that's very baller. That's him just going like he's yeah. completely inside our heads. I think um, he's so and, and credit to him. he's got so good that and this has turned into the Virat Kohli Appreciation Society, yeah, um, is, yes. the original name of the that show during, during the pilot. Um, <laughs> but he's just got so good that it was just like he can do whatever he wants. He doesn't care about aesthetics, even though like his cover drive is so good yeah. that mm. it could it could leave me on a text message on red for three and a half mm. hours mm. and then eventually get back to me and yeah. I'll, I would reply within a minute. That's yes. how attractive his cover drive and is. He, yeah. And speaking of attractiveness, he doesn't yes. need to have big pipes either. He's very comfortable yeah. having a lithe yeah. physique. He he's doesn't need to sinewy. demonstrate his... Beard is very well manicured. Mm. It's trimmed. It's You've tight that, to the jaw. Mm. I've been saying that for quite a while. You read my yeah. tattoo that I just mm. got. Um, uh, Let's talk about, just quickly, okay. so to pivot to the warm-up mm. game okay. versus the yeah, CA11. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, a few things came of that, of mm. course. Um, we hit 500 odd against India, mm. yeah. um, for starters. Yeah. And Prithvi Shaw, sure. the Cricket Australia 11, yeah. Australia. supporting yeah. Paxi. Yeah. Um, he batted well. But Prithvi Shaw sure rolled his ankle. Mm. We hit lots of runs. Mm. Is India foxing us? What are we meant to deduce from this, is what I'm saying. Mm. I deduced immediately, Dave, when Prithvi Shaw sure rolled his ankle. This, who, by the way, is his 18 year old prodigy. He hit a hundred, mm. uh, better than a runnable 100 in his first test match, mm. although yeah. it was against the West Indies. So mm. does that count? Yes, it mm. does. With a test match, it does there's count. There's runs and there's real runs. Um, but he caught a ball, and there's that picture, that still image of him no. just like rolling his ankle. And like, I think <laughs> anyone who's ever played any level of sport or even yeah. just like thrown a, 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 you know, a PlayStation control playing FIFA yeah. could yeah. just like, you know, feel that pain. It was transfer pain. I, I, I looked I, at it and I go, ah, oh, no. I think it was a disgrace that it was shown on air. You know what I mean? There's certain things that so we don't talk about in the media. It's, it's, it's like really should graphic warning. Say this I absolutely been. can't deal with any of those knee injuries or ankle injuries or whatever. And they had a still in, like still moment mm. of mm. that ankle at 90 degrees. Sorry, mm. I can't deal with it. It's it. a it's disgrace. award-winning photo. He's gonna be, <laughs> he's gonna be a guy though. 18. That, like that happens to you. He's gonna be spending 40 bucks a week at Kenneth Warehouse on strapping tape. Yeah, but then we can see Prithvi Shaw 2.0 soon. So that's a good point. That's so exciting. Can we go point. back to Brat Kohli? We've spoken mm. a lot about on the podcast that um, that um, 
Vratkoli smells blood. India smell blood. Yeah. It's a, a weak in Australian smelling. team. Australia don't know how to perform on the field. We don't know what we're going to do. Do we attack? Yes. Do we not? A lot of yes. chat in the media, which we're now just you know, exacerbating ourselves, mm. fueling the fire, etc., etc. We are the I just... <laughs> we, are, we are gone. We dictate um, the yeah, yeah, name of the album. Yeah. Um, I just it's sense so that, very... like, that, that Vratkoli is essentially... He is a bloodhound. He smells the arrhythmia of the Australian cricket team and he's going to yeah. rip our hearts out yes. in Adelaide. Where he scored 100 before, he scored his his yes. his, fam- his favouritest ever 100. Yeah, most favourite. Most yeah. favourite ever 100. Thank you, Dave, for, yeah. to help me out with speaking English. Yeah. Um, and he's going to do it again, surely. He's going to tear our heart out, just like Bart's babysitter did in that Simpsons episode. Yeah. That's two Simpsons yeah, references yeah, in the yeah. first 10 minutes. Yeah, well, we are cool. mainstream now. I mean, Jason Gillespie, another colleague, and yes. Ricky Ponting did offer Dizzy. a couple of options. Like Gillespie just said, well, we should bowl a fourth stump line to um, to Coley with unerring accuracy, yep. and the occasional just. one just goes straight when the rest of them move away. And Ricky Ponting also said, well, we need to get him out with um, tactics and actions. Mm. Yes, <laughs> tactics and actions. Yes, yeah, so that's specific. That's specific. That's mm. just cricket. Mm. Um, all right, well, lads, moving on. Um, I mean, there's been it's a bit of a funny week this week because no cricket has happened. Obviously, the WBBL has occurred, and we're just going to get onto that in yeah, a moment's yes. time. But there's no, you know, we're right ready for you know showdowns for yeah. battles. Mm. Yeah. But the biggest battles, battle yeah. that's happened yeah. this week vacuums. happened off the field. Yeah. Media versus former player. Yeah. Here we go, Jared Waitley versus Michael Clark. What mm. an absolute gift this was for the grey cricketer, right in the wheelhouse. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. It was, um, yeah. where, do, where do we even start with this? Well, it was six days ago, so like in terms of news sense, we probably Fish shouldn't be talking about it. We're but not journalists. We have to, we have to talk about it. Like I still, rem- you know, it's one of those moments where I remember where I was when I saw Michael Clark. <laughs> just like nine eleven. Message it was. I was just in the kitchen yeah. pouring a glass of red, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I mm. just, I had to sort of triple take. Nothing was ever the same. Yeah, uh, at, at the Gerald Wheatley bit. If you're not familiar with what happened. Mm. Um, uh, Michael Clark was in the press, uh, the former Australian captain, talking about uh, how Australian cricket, you know, the Australian side still mm. does need to play hard, and David Warner yes. should be encouraged to be aggressive, but not overstep the line. So he's that mythical mm. line all over again, and it kind of just brought up all of, you know, the, the, you know, it raked up these old graves mm. around the way we should be playing, the mm. whole thing that led to sandpaper. Yes. And mm-hmm. Jared Waitley, you know, in a masterful media performance, I must say, took issue with it, mm. and uh, yep. he came out and slammed him alongside his friend Simon Cadditch on SEN. Are we mm. allowed to talk about other things? So who cares? Uh, here we are. Um, it's done. It's live TV. Yeah. And uh, and and Clark hit back in kind mm. and and just went through the classic out yes. power plays, didn't mm. he? Just called him by the wrong name, Gerald mm. Wheatley. You didn't said play, you didn't any play tests. test cricket. Mm. Um, filled it with facts that was opinion. Uh, it was, a, it was <laughs> yeah. just a fact it was a f- based. It was, yeah. it was very very uh, aggressive. My big takeaway. Um, from it, and there were so many guys that I've mm. forgotten all of them. Biggest like, my biggest yeah. takeaway, Dave, glad you asked, and it was uh, the quote uh, the, Had you had the courage enough yeah. to make mm. it onto a cricket pitch? And my yeah. goodness me, doesn't it take some courage to mm. play some cricket? Yeah, yeah. Um, to make it onto the pitch. Just to even make it yeah. onto the pitch, you know, yeah, maybe if, you know, if I'm walking late at night, I won't go through the park. Yeah, I can't yeah. cut yeah. through across no. a square. No. We'll no, never go right. through so the we'll square. Never get runs again if you do that. <laughs> I mean, it was it, it was it was an it was a classic power play. We studied power plays in Year Twelve um, mm. for those who are in New South Wales. The HSC. I, yeah. I think that you Clark, studied power that, plays. It was power plays it was, was one elective. of the th- was one of the themes. Yeah, oh. and uh, and like Clark should submit that text mm. to the Board of Studies um, for <laughs> like for, for study for students of what it means to do yeah, a power play. Because that was had he written it in identity. his identity. Yes, had he written it in his in his iPhone mm. notes and then sent a screenshot. Was that what the was? Is that what the format know. was? It looked yeah. like an iPhone notes yeah. template. It looked mm. like it might have been a screen grab mm. from a Google Doc. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we just just quickly let's get into the WBBL okay. boys. It started last week. Yep. Um, Scorchers beat the Hurricanes. The Stars beat the Sixers. That yep. was probably the kind of like the zenith of, of the fixtures last Blow week. You saw sort of um, Elise Perry and Alyssa Healy from the Star Studded Sixers versus. Um, the Melbourne Stars, who, like most people, were tipping to not win a game. And it was yep. a total boil over. Mm. Perry and Healy got them off to a great start. Um, but Lozelle Lee came home extremely strong yeah. Yeah. for the Stars, hitting a sixer to bring up her ton. One of the greatest WDBBL mm. uh, innings we've ever seen. Her third T20 mm. century at that level. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it, 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 the Sixers have it all to do. The most obvious thing about that was that, um, obviously, Elise Perry, Ash Gardner and Alyssa Healy still coming in the post circuit. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a come down from yeah. the post circuit. Mm. after yeah. winning the World Cup for the Australian mm. cricket team mm. over there in the West Indies and who could blame them you know mm. Rihanna was probably over there Usain Bolt I'm not yeah. sure who else um, wonderful time yeah. wonderful Punch. time yeah. and, and the Sixers are just a stacked side they've won the mm. they've won the comp back to back they're going yeah. for the three-peat yeah. um, should have got dusted off well they did get dusted off by the Stars so yeah. um, you know take a week hell off hell of a circuit to get over hell of a circuit to get over circuit. I've always said that lads I want to switch tack yep. for a moment if Looking you'll forward indulge to me okay um, 
cricket is a psychological game, as we all know. Thanks, um, right. I'm still seeing a psychologist by the time I was man cat as young twelve rep cricket. <laughs> okay. So there's that. <laughs> it's that specific but I incident. Think, that um, you know, we need to turn to psychology in order to fix what's wrong with Australian cricket at the moment. Mm. Australian cricket is having some problems. I'm not sure if you've been reading the, the headlines, but there's been a few issues lately. Okay. Now I want to introduce you guys, and I'll just um, move over here Please, yep. in live mm. TV. Yep. Um, hierarchy of Australian cricket needs. So this is mm. named in ode of Abraham Maslow, famous mm. for Maslow's hierarchy of needs, mm. one of the great psychologists of the 20th century, my mm. favourite psychologist of the 20th century. Mm. Um, mm. So guys, I want to mm. kind of throw this to you. We'll kick around some ideas and then we'll yeah. rank them mm. yes. and we'll find out exactly what the hierarchy of Australian cricket it's needs our, is. What we think Australian cricket needs. Absolutely. Yeah. So please, Okay, I'll uh, kick off. All right, I've just um, got my first one here mm. on live TV. Mm. Let me just present this to the mm. camera. I think Australian cricket needs more of Lloyd Pope's wrongen. Mm. Uh, if any of you saw his display in the Sheffield Shield uh, recently where he took seven for and absolutely humiliated um, older first-class players, yes. I think that's exactly what we need. Australian cricket needs a hero. Australia needs a hero, according mm. to some out in the press. If you combine his um, flowing red hair, mm -hmm. that salad, mm. which probably will go quite soon, Small to be window. fair, uh, a small window with the um, wonderful wrong that he has that mm. humiliates a lot of people, I mm. think that would be a really good start okay. in terms of um, helping Australian well, that's cricket. that's a great place to start, so we'll put it down here. Yep. Lloyd Pope's... Wrong mm. yeah, thank um, you. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a crack, boys. Mm. I think Australian cricket and society mm. needs <laughs> bigger backyards. <laughs> okay. So obviously it's 2018. There's a problem around housing yes. in society, mm. affordability, mm -hmm. um, high density units. Yes. Um, that that kind of transition mm. um, results in mm. less backyards for kids to play cricket in. It's wow. a real problem. Mm. I mean, we're a nation of renters now. Mm. Mm. And and I worry, I seriously worry for the future mm. of Australian cricket if there aren't kids, you know, rolling around in nice grassy backyards mm. of at least 22 yards mm. in length mm. to hone their cricket skills. There's an election coming up. That's There's a, an election coming yeah. up. Scott Morrison, I'm not sure if you're watching this. Mm. Um, you're doing a great job, but maybe you can turn your attention <laughs> to this specific issue. So I'll mm. click it on here. Mm. Thanks. Bigger mm. backyards. Bigger backyards for Australian cricket. Um, okay, for Australian for cricket. For the hierarchy of needs. Let's so get a shot there. Normal TV. Okay. Mm. Um, goes. All right, well, this one almost goes without saying. I almost feel mm. embarrassed to actually put this up because everyone knows what's coming. Yeah, what's yes. uh, and that's obviously uh, Pat Cummins' eyes. Yes. Um, this one almost speaks for itself. What Australian cricket needs right now is a distraction. Mm. Um, and what better way to that's distract distraction. the Australian public yeah. by Pat Cummins' beautiful blue eyes. Yeah. He's got a wonderful mane as well. This all fits into uh, Australian cricket's bigger need as well of tighter shirts. Mm. We spoke previously on the podcast yeah. about how Sean Marsh has got a really tight shirt at the moment. His rig is looking better than ever. Mm. Sure, he couldn't get off the square, you know, in mm. the UAE. Um, but, you know, he's come home strong and he scored 1800s in a row in the Sheffield Shield. He's going to do well for us at the Adelaide Oval. He's got mm. a tight shirt. But mm. that's all part of the distraction mm. for Pat Cummins' eyes. Yeah. The Australian cricket team right now needs sex. Absolutely. Let that sit there. Yeah, mm. that's definitely um, So okay. Pat Cummins' eyes is yep. there. So, lads, okay, so. I think that Australian cricket needs a return to boat tours. So mm. in Bradman's day, <laughs> mm -hmm. we used to take like a 12 week tour to yes. England. There was yeah. a lot of time together. You build a lot of camaraderie over that time. Mm. You might get sick, you might get tuberculosis, who knows, but it <laughs> makes you a better cricketer yeah. in the long run. Mm. These days, cricketers are, you know, they're, they're in, they're cocooned, mm. they're in business class, mm. and it's maybe mm. leading to some poor cricket. Yeah. I think we need to return to rickety boat tours and yeah. maybe mm. some people will die on the trip, I'm mm. not sure. It is absolutely maybe won't even get there. Mm. Absolutely no point in any of these pre like tour matches. The Caxi Eleven just played. Mm. It, you know, Australia go over to, you know, the UAE for instance, can play a couple of trials. There's no benefit. They yeah. should all be on a boat, getting to know each other, playing some stick cricket on board the, the boats, you know, being mm. away from friends and family for a long, mm. longer period of time on a boat. So I've talked about housing policy and I've talked about boats and I'm about to vote for the Liberal Party camera. Mm. Mm. And you uh, said Morrison's doing a good job. Yes, I really, I really don't think he is doing a good job. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think I that. just have to clarify that. And, and finally... Oh, so the last one, Piss. And finally, mm. this is how you get to self-realisation, which mm. is the point of Maslow's... The whole point. The whole point of it. We need to win meaningful cricket in meaningful formats. What do you the mean, Sam? The way I see it is that there's three me uh, sort of items of meaningful cricket coming up for Australia. Mm. We've got the Australia versus India series that is upon us. We have the World Cup happening in England next year, yes. then we have the meaningful Ashes. Stuff. And we're talking about men's cricket here to be specific. There's a lot of other meaningful cricket going mm. on, mm -hmm. but in terms of men's cricket, uh, we, we absolutely need to win at least one of these things. Mm. Uh, a little bit more earnest. If we don't win one of these things, we are in dire straits. I don't even know. Well, I, I, can't, I can't contemplate. We'll go back into recession. I'm sure that Brat Coley yes. is here to actually um, end democracy as we know it in this country. Yeah. You know, just, just one man's opinion mm. staring into a lens. Mm. Um, 
Okay. So I think we'll go back into the 80s, the, you know, the, the border era, yeah, when thanks. we decided, what did we decide to do in the Allen border era? Yeah. We decided to be really mean to other teams to start winning games of cricket. So oh. the whole thing's going to come full circle. You think it will? If okay. we don't win one of those last three. So there it is, lads. Uh, TGC's hierarchy of Australian cricket. Maybe next time we'll get some better props, but if you can just think of what a pyramid might look like, yeah. and that escalating to the top, yep. Yep. Um, self-realisation, that's how we're going to get there. Yep. Okay, finally, boys, to wrap up this uh, modest digital production on Channel 7, we have your questions. We've got our hashtag AskTGC section. You guys have written in. We've got uh, some answers for you. So the first one comes from at Zydar Ninja, mm. I believe. Z-Y-D-A-R Ninja. Not Thanks ninja. for writing in, Zydar. Uh, the question is, boys, what has Matt Renshaw done to make the selectors constantly overlook him? And if the Aussies don't want him, can England have him? Can England have him? Mm. <laughs> I like the idea mm. of other countries just picking up discarded cricketers mm. generally. <laughs> yeah. like and I immediately up. want him now that someone else has him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It usually works the other way around. Mm. Once someone wants one person, you're like, no, 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 no I want that thing. Yeah, I want this yeah. relationship to work. No, yeah. I don't want it to work. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I wrote down some, job, some, some dot points yep. um, <laughs> that um, I, are the reason why Matt Renshaw, uh, what, what he's done, yep. um, looks like a giant baby. Is that right. um, runs slower than Tony <laughs> He's Abbott? He's got no control over that. Yeah. Of well, let's so, see. You know, yeah. Yeah, Tim Payne's got a three-step skin regime, as we've discussed previously. Yeah. Uh, he runs slower than Tony Abbott finishes a sentence. Yep. Um, yep. Absolutely no way he's ever bought a round in his life. Why would he? You know, he's an Australian cricketer at 19, got himself mm. in the first slip in the first test matches. Mm. Like, there's no way he's mm. buying beers. Mm. He's, he? he's always had beers bought for him. So there's that. Yep. Also looks like he's got a bit of a messy kit that spills over into other parts of the dressing room. Mm. Just looks like one of those kind of guys. I don't yeah. see Matt Renshaw as being neat, compact, squared away. Yeah, okay. okay. Therefore, not selected. He's a little sloppy because you saw him with his shirt out once and you've deduced everything from that. That's fair we, enough. We, we can't talk about Renshaw without mentioning he's 345. Oh, uh, yeah. For yeah. Tumble, oh, yeah. right? And the worst thing about mm. this was he, he his humble Instagram post afterwards. Mm. So he's made 345, um, subjected just some humble first grade cricketers to a dis gracefully difficult day <laughs> yes. uh, out yes. in the field. Yes. probably hung over and just yes. wanted to have a good day out with their mates. And then he has the temerity to put this Instagram post up saying, I just wanted to give it a right old clonk. Yeah. You know, so the worst thing yeah. you can do after scoring 100, if you're in the opposition, is to have a humble player. Yeah. You know, like, like Good and humble. The uh, worst combination you can think of. Another yeah. thing that he did with my kind against him mm. um, is that he was seen holding a champagne glass uh, oh, in dear. the dressing room. He was toasting his come 345 Matt. with champagne glass. Don't want to say too much there, mm. lads, but come on. Mm. Doesn't, come, does, come it on. doesn't play well in Queensland. It must be mm, domestic lager or like, yeah. nothing. Because mm. beers are what gets you into teams. Mm. Uh, this next one is from <laughs> Alex Bishop, and it's from Facebook. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on David Warner in the nets at the SCG against the Aussie bowlers wearing his grade helmet and pads, but state clothing? Thoughts on that, boys? It, yeah, really interesting. So for, for yeah. those who saw it, some like amazing footage of Steve Smith and mm. David Warner taking on the Australian pace bowling trio yeah. of Stark, Hazelwood yeah, and good. Cummins, which is pretty good footage. It doesn't have the double lens, so it comes through really quickly. Yeah. The camera's behind, so it's really quite compelling. But obviously, we're going to the social element of mm. this. Mm. Uh, and we noted that, yeah, Warner and Smith both had like a mishmash of grade and state gear. And they're obviously constrained because they can't wear the Aussie gear. Yes. So what are they going to do? You know, cricket's always about alpha power plays. Mm. What, I was very interested that they mis mishmashed it because you guys would have seen this growing up through rep teams. Like, the better the player, the more they would wear separate items of gear from different yeah, sides. So yeah. they've obviously gone I've for that angle. Around. Yeah, they've gone, oh, I'm going to wear, you know, Smith is like, I'm Sutherland shirt. I'm going to wear, like, a state lid. Warner's like, I'm the Randwick lid, state stuff. Mm. That was all they could really do. But I kind of commend them for that. They had to do something. Yeah. I reckon David's been through enough, hasn't he? Like, mm. you know, like I think poor old Dave, he's a bit confused. <laughs> up is down, down is up. Gray Nichols is now Spartan. Mm. You know, kit's yeah. changing so much. I reckon, you know, oh, we've no just... No OLED ads this summer. No mm. OLED Greatest anymore, thing. you know, for him anyway. Maybe yeah. some, you know, I don't know, mm. if they want to sponsor but the show. But I like how they're reintegrating mm -hmm. them slowly, you know, mm. getting yeah. them in the nets against the Australian team. Yes. I wonder if this is just phase one of a multi-phase reintegration. Well, yes. maybe. I mean, I say yeah, I we would, just, I you know... I wonder that too. I mean, phase two is obviously, you know, a barbecue at Jeff mm. Marsh's house yes. and Langer and his daughters come mm. around. Mm. Stage three is probably mm. introduction back into the WhatsApp group. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's probably yeah. not in there yet. Mm. And then yes. stage four, World Cup and Ashes. Well, mm. I reckon we just let him score 1,400 runs in Grey Creek before mm. Christmas. Mm. And then, you know, then we'll, we'll say, what and then, you know, call if we need you. you know, do you want mm. to play? You know, well, probably not, but, you know, all the best to him. Tim Young writes in and he says, with deteriorating shoulder ligaments affecting my ability to throw the ball in from the rope, which of these options limits my loss of social capital? Number one, uh, underarm to a nearby teammate. Two, the bowl in. Three, nonchalant jog in, ball in hand. Mm. Or number four, throw with excruciating pain. 
Yeah. Right. Okay, so you can rule out immediately number four, throw with excruciating pain. Mm, okay. I think there's no mm-hmm. social capital in that. Well, if he throws with it in uh, and then just shows how much effort he's, exer- he's exerted, okay. um, he's immediately going to lose social capital. I was going to um, lend or like lean on the underarm, mm. um, but it has to be it has to be nonchalant. Even if there's a run out on to win the game, if he still just underarms mm. it in um, mm. or to his teammate, I think... Um, I think he's going to sort of yeah. increase his, his social capital I mean, I that think, way. I think the bowling is probably his best option. But my, my thoughts <laughs> are that if he's stuck fielding in the outfield, then he already has no social capital whatsoever. Yeah, good point. Like yes. you're a half it's a trick question. Yeah, it's a player, trick question. Mm. If he's of the age where he's got no shoulder ligaments, and I presume that means in, in great cricket outfield. terms he's mm. probably 22. Yes. Um, I, I mean, I think the bowling's his play. I'm yeah, thinking, yeah. I, do you remember when Courtney, Courtney Walsh, Walsh yeah, used to yeah, do it? Yeah. And I play with guys, like, they're all over 30 back in the yeah. day. Um, so I guess you could always say, well, if, Courtney, if it was good enough for Courtney Walsh, it's yeah. good enough for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, got, he's got 500 test wickets. Yeah, he has but a yeah. lot of social capital, yeah, yeah, Courtney yeah. Walsh. That's, that, he that's does. what he would immediately pivot to, like, yeah. when challenged. Oh, no, Courtney Walsh did it. He got yeah. 500 test wickets. In fact, don't throw it at all, even if you can. Just, yeah. just bowl it in. Like well, it depends Walsh. who bowled the ball as well. If you don't yeah. like the guy who bowled the ball, yeah. pick it up and throw it over the fence. No problem. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. just yeah. That's match fixing. Yeah. Big in Pakistan, allegedly. Okay. Mm. Do we have time for this last one? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. One, la- one, one last question. It's from mm-hmm. Cootsie uh, from Facebook, just named Cootsie. Okay. Uh, boys, my my boy, my <laughs> my <laughs> girlfriend came to watch me play for the first time and told me between innings in front of both teams she never wanted to come again. How many runs do I need to score to make up for this with my teammates, or should I just change clubs or leagues? Never let your girlfriend come to watch you play cricket. Mm. Um, she won't be impressed mm. with the standard. She won't be impressed with the people that you hang out with on Saturday. Right. Um, and, I mean, this all goes to the wrong point. She won't love you anymore, obviously. Yeah. So there's no benefit of bringing your girlfriend to watch you play cricket because mm. she'll see what you're wasting your time on. It's going to be speeding up the process of, well, you know, you'll say to her, I've got an away game this week. The, the game's an hour and a half out of town. Mm-hmm. When will we be back? Maybe Wednesday. I'm not sure. If we win the game, post-match mm-hmm. circuit. Um, so there's, there's no benefit. Um, I know that's not what you asked, but I'm just telling you. Well, could, could well, how many runs? Like... He's asked for like a concrete figure. How many I went for a different tact. Yeah. Does he literally yeah. need to make up for it? Yeah, mm. and, and that's the bit he kind of I leaves out, leaves out because mm. he doesn't say how many he scored. I'd hate to think that he sort of... He did hit a ton, and mm. his girlfriend then said, I, I never want to come and see this ever again. <laughs> because the strike rate no was chance. 48. No, it's yeah. not fast enough. Yeah. I'm never coming again unless you get that. Uh, I reckon when Cootsie wrote that question in, he was not expecting it to be read out on television. Probably not. Mm. Um, oh, well, that's his loss. Digital uh, television. Um, wonderful first up effort, lads. Uh, we're signing off here for the Grey Cricketer on 7. We'll be back Tuesday, every Tuesday throughout the summer, well. on demand on 7 Plus. Well, well let's just see how this one yeah. goes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, 4.30 Tuesday afternoons, you'll be at training, but will you be? No, you won't be. We'll mm. see you next week.